Dude, did you know that you can still take advantage of MPE even if you don't own a push or another MPE controller? Being able to edit parameters polyphonically in Ableton's piano roll means that you can take a boring progression that sounds like this and turn it into something amazing that sounds like this. But real quick before we get into it, I'm running the biggest sale of the year on my Ableton courses right now. These are the biggest and most thorough lessons available on Ableton Live with rave reviews across the internet. So if you vibe with me and my teaching style, you can check them out up here or down in the description to learn more. Let's do it. All right, so first let me help you understand what MPE actually does. The secret to what makes MPE something that modern producers shouldn't ignore is in the name, MIDI polyphonic expression. To explain further, up until now, you've only really been able to edit parameters over whatever entire clip you're working with. So if you have a clip with chords, any edits that you make are gonna apply to the whole chord. So for example, if I was to make an edit over this chord progression here, let's say I do something like this, okay? And then if I duplicate it, this is gonna go over the whole chord progression, right? But the thing about MPE that's so amazing is that you can actually have control over individual notes. So let's check it out. I'm gonna go ahead and undo all that and let's go ahead and crack open this wavetable. This is an instance of Ableton wavetable, which happens to be an MPE enabled device. You have to choose MPE enabled devices and there are many of them inside of Ableton that comes as stock. And then there's also MPE VST plugins that you can use and we're gonna get into that in here in a little bit. But first of all, let's take a look at, for example, filter frequency. So when you open Wavetable, you can click over to this tab that's called MPE, right? Let's go ahead and look at this clip. So here's the clip right here, and you'll notice that there's an MPE tab inside of the piano roll, right? So if I switch over to this, you'll notice that the options sort of change. We see slide, we see pressure, and then if we click on an individual note, check it out. We also have what appears to be a pitch bend. So this can actually do some incredible things. Right now, this chord progression just goes... Oh, it's just so utterly boring. <laughs> but what we can do is we can actually bend individual notes to different destinations. So this is what the pitch bend does normally. Right? It's taking all the notes and moving them the same amount of intervals, right? We're going up to or down to in this case. And of course you can go into Wavetable and change that here by changing pitch bend. So I could make pitch bend go all the way up 48. You know, and there's some fun to be had there, but that's not what we're talking about at all. In the MPE tab, you'll notice that there's also pitch, and pitch is set to 48. So what this means is that I can go into this clip, and I can actually change these notes to go down to these next interval targets, okay? So let's say I want to take this D sharp 3 and make it go down to C. Check this out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to notes, and I'm just going to make this note last this entire time, okay? And then this C3 right here, I'm just going to delete it. And so what I can do is I can go back into MPE and check this out. I'll click on this note, and I, what I want to do is I want to bend this note down to my C3, right? So I can do that right here. Now just that tiny little change is so much more fun to listen to. Let's make it a little late and make it a little lazy, right? And then if I click option, I can change this to kind of be a more like smoothed out curve. Let's do something like this. And let's go ahead and do the same thing with this note. So I wanna go from this B flat down to this A flat right here, right? So I can go ahead and delete this note and you can do this from the MPE tab. I'm just gonna do that. And I'm gonna take this note and stretch it out all the way, right? And let's go ahead and bend this note down at, this, at a similar area down to that A flat. And then maybe on this note, I'll just delete this one and just have it stretch out the whole time. So now what we're doing is instead of playing a new chord, we're just bending to the new chord, right? How much more interesting is that, right? I'll crank up the uh, frequency a little bit. So something else to know is that you also don't have to always go down. You can also bend up if you'd like. Okay, so check this out. This is now what this chord progression sounds like now that I've bent these last two chords into each other. To me, this is so much more satisfying and lends itself to the vibe of this song, which is just this like lazy kind of like lo-fi kind of beat, right?
So this is really interesting, right? We can make these interesting chords happen by pitch bending one note into another. But MPE gets so much more powerful than that. Let's look at something else. So if I go into wavetable and I click on another parameter such as panning, right? If I pan this, this is gonna take all of the notes and pan them together, right? But that's not what I want to do. The power of MPE, again, is in the polyphonic aspect of it. I can take individual notes and I can pan those around. Notice that when I clicked on pan, of course, pan now appears in MPE. And so just like with the matrix, if you click on filter frequency, that's what will appear in the matrix. MPE also has a matrix and anything that you click on will appear down here. So resonance frequency. But in this case, let's do panning. Now check this out. Right now we can see slide and press. What are these? Slide and pressure are things that you can do when you actually are playing an MPE controller. But again, you don't need an MPE controller to do this. I'm actually gonna reset this to zero and reset this to zero, okay? And instead, we're gonna make slide have everything to do with panning. So 100% right here for slide. Now let's go ahead and go back into the clip and check this out. Down here at the bottom, we can see slide and pressure. So I can slide this up, <laughs> no pun intended. And let's go ahead and start panning individual notes to different places. So now I have individual control over each note's panning. Let's go ahead and take a listen to this. What? Right, so we hear that high note. That high note is actually moving to the right. So something that might make sense actually is to start my panning all the way to the left and then turn my slide all the way up to 100%. And what this means is that I now have full control over the panning of each note from left to right. So going back into this clip, all of the notes except for the highest note are gonna stay over to the left, but the highest note is gonna pan from the left to the right. Okay, so hopefully you're starting to see how much power there is here. So starting with the second note, let's start all the way over to the right and move it to the left. <laughs> And we'll start this one in the middle, make it go up, and then back to the middle or something. Right? How amazing is that? All right, so let's go ahead and move this note down here. And you can just click on these different notes and add them to different places. So this one doesn't have panning yet, but we'll make it slide the whole way. And yeah, the workflow is so simple. You just click on whatever note you're working with and then move it to where you want it to go. So now we have four notes that are swirling around in terms of panning. <laughs> All right, let's have more fun with this. So hopefully this is starting to crack your brain open. I don't need an MPE controller to take advantage of this stuff. Let's go ahead and use pressure. Maybe we could do something with filter frequency, right? We could choose to open and close the filter frequency. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the filter frequency low, but then I'm gonna give pressure 100% of the control over it. So right now everything should be pretty closed down. Right? But instead, going back into the clip, let's go ahead and reveal pressure. So maybe I'll make something rhythmic. Let's start something like this. <laughs> right, so this might be kind of wild, but I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this. Now we can hear that just the high note is going. And I just wanna point out that this is an offset, meaning that I could go into Wavetable and open the filter frequency a bit, and I could actually bring in the other notes underneath of this note's rhythm. Let's go ahead and take this further, and I'm gonna go ahead and animate all of the other notes as well. Okay, so as you can see, <laughs> I've edited every single one of these notes here, right? So all these notes now have some animation when it comes to their filter frequency. So if I leave the filter frequency low, this is gonna take all the control, right? Right? How much fun is that? Now, of course, this is a lot. Maybe something that would be better here is to turn the pressure down a bit so that it doesn't have as much control over the filter frequency. And remember that this is an offset. So what that means is that I can still animate the filter frequency together, 
But what it will do is it will offset each one of the filter frequency settings for each note. So for example, if I wanted this part to climb, Okay, so that's cool. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this track down a little bit and I wanna show you something else. So Ableton can interact with third-party plugins. If you drag and drop a third-party plugin and you see it say uh, MPE on it, that means that Ableton can actually interface with that specific plugin's MPE options, okay? So this happens to be Arteria Pigments. I'm gonna go ahead and open this. And every single plugin that you're gonna run into is gonna have a different way of interfacing with MPE control, okay? But all of them are gonna share similar controls, such as, you know, pressure, aftertouch, and then of course with slide, and then of course pitch bend per note. So let's go ahead and go into pigments options and I'll show you. The way that you do this in pigments is you go into settings and then you can see MPE settings. MPE is actually disabled by default. So you have to click on this and then you'll notice that it says, okay, what's the bend range? So similarly to a uh, wavetable, it has 48 steps of bend range. So I could take advantage of maybe taking some notes and bending them into other notes, right? That's pretty cool. But something else that I think is worth pointing out is that the slide CC, if you are playing an MPE controller and you wanna do something with slide, per note, you can actually use CC74 here to do that. Now what that does in pigments is what that does is that actually just takes over macro one. You'll notice that I can move macro two and macro four and three, but for some reason I can't touch macro one. Well, what's up with that? Well, what that actually means is that macro one is now MPE slide, okay? Let me show you what that might mean in practice. So here's my little uh, riff that I've got with uh, pigments. I'll go ahead and turn off the wavetable. Let's listen to this. So let's say I wanted to do something with that. So maybe I wanna do a filter cutoff. So let's go ahead and do that here on this filter and I'll turn the cutoff down. Now I know that some of you don't have pigments but I'm just illustrating the point here. Okay, so we're doing it with the filter. And maybe something else we could do is also map it to, I don't know, maybe we'll add a square wave under here as like a sub oscillator. Okay, so, <laughs> so this is our control. Now if I play this, nothing is changing and the filter cutoff is very low, right? But again, here's slide. So let me click on this note right here and I'll just bring this note up and now it'll have a square wave under it and the filter's gonna cut off over the course of the note, right? So I'll go ahead and turn on my grid here and let's go ahead and we're gonna copy this modulation and add it to all of the other notes here. So now it sounds like but that was only one note, remember. So this is why this is so cool. So with the other note, I'm gonna ramp up the other way, right? And of course I can do it in a different fashion. So now we have ridiculous. And remember, this is still an offset. So if I go into here and I open the cutoff a bit, this is now what it sounds like. And something else that's cool about this is whether you're using an Ableton device or a third-party plugin, you can always map these things in retrospect. So I could go ahead and, and add this to the panning. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, because those notes have inverse modulation, we can actually get them to cross over each other in the stereo field. Okay, so I just added a bunch more modulation here. Let's go ahead and listen to both of these ideas together using the MPE technology that's available in the piano roll. Let's take a listen. So the fact that you can just open Ableton's piano roll and change parameters per note, I feel like is a super overlooked feature. There are so many different applications to creating brand new, really interesting sounding, especially chord progressions, that I feel like everyone just sort of missed it. Like this is powerful stuff and I really, really encourage you to get in there and start messing around with the MPE options inside of the piano roll, even if you don't have an MPE controller. Now, of course, using an MPE controller is fun and uh, it allows for you to do some really interesting things with your hands, but the amount of precision that you can have when it comes to normally editing parameters in Ableton can now also be utilized at the clip level. So definitely get in there and mess around with this stuff. I think it's super cool. I hope that this video was inspirational to you. If you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe. Much love, everybody. I'll see you next time.